Uh, I'm covering the uh, Shannon upgrade updates from Grove. Um, there are two major things that are being worked on right now that should be uh, done by the end of the week. Um, one is the research and uh, R&D on the permissionless demand scalability. Um, so there's a lot there, but essentially making sure that the blockchain is ready to scale um, is the TLDR. Uh, as always, there's a lot of tickets and uh, yeah. issues open in GitHub if you want to follow along more closely. And uh, as well as that, uh, with the Alpha Testnet 3, there are a number of uh, bugs or issues that have been raised, as well as continued R&D um, with just bringing Shannon to parity with Morse. Uh, the goal here is to have all the utility features by the end of this week merged in so that Shannon has the same utility features as Morse. Uh, that pretty much covers at a high level for um, Shannon. And I will. Great. Oh, thanks. Um, I will move over to Path. Um, Path uh, R and D is moving along very well. Uh, I think that we are still on target for a very early September pre-alpha version being in public. Um, we are in the final stages of the cleanup R&D of the existing portal middleware to prepare it for PATH. Um, I want to stress that when the code arrives in the repo, either next week or the following week, that there will be very minimal documentation. It is, not, it is a public source pre-alpha, not necessarily a true open source pre-alpha. That, that will come over time uh, as we continue to improve and iterate on the documentation. Um, lastly, I will cover just on the side of the portal itself. Um, we have published some documentation about the changes to the pricing. Uh, and we've also published some, some blog posts and forum posts about how we approach quality of service. Um, we are undergoing our cutover to our new pricing scheme this weekend. So, uh, that we are hoping to minimally interrupt service or not at all. Uh, but if there's any funkiness, uh, we will be around on Sunday do, executing the migration uh, and we'll be watching that behavior of our application closely. So um, that covers all the updates from Grove. Awesome, good stuff. Rolling on well. Uh, let's move on I think, to gateways. Do we have any gateway announcements, uh, Sasquatch or others uh, to announce? Hi there, everybody. Um, just a quick one. We we're continuing to work on growing our business, right, and bringing new chains to Pocket. Um, and the latest one is Rari. We're just did a demo with the Rari community, and um, and looking to uh, see if we can bring them to the Pocket network. Um, so if any of you have contacts at Rari, we just appreciate any any uh, extra voice you can lend to us as we try to bring them on board. Um, but out of that, everything else is pretty quiet. Thanks. OK, then. That's pretty quick as well. Good stuff. We're uh, roaring through this. Um, next thing, is anyone from PNF here um, who remains at PNF uh, to give me any PNF updates? I do not see uh, Steve. And obviously, Mike is traveling as well. So I guess we don't have any PNF updates. Um, so in record time, we're into the open floor. Uh, anyone got any questions or thoughts or anything they want to put out uh, on the open floor? Okay, I think we may have done the uh, world's quickest ecosystem call here. Uh, clearly, uh, Jinx is the factor in the extra 50 minutes. Um, we'll give another minute or two if he wants to bring something up or we'll write something in the chat. Go ahead. Otherwise, it looks like we've done a, done a very fast ecosystem call, very efficient here. Um, let's see what we can do. Oh, in the chat, someone's running. So, Anaski's asking... Could... Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Anaski's asking, can anyone explain why traffic is so low these days?
Um, I can explain why the traffic has been so high for a few peaks recently, and that is 100% around the utilization of Polygon and the Polygon public endpoint. That's what's pushing us up closer to a billion. When that's not there, mm -hmm. then we are kind of at this network equilibrium of about 300 million a day. I will also add that um, the initial change with Gandalf has actually been a net negative to the network, um, right? But the basic idea is to bring in specialists over time to specialize on one chain or a couple of chains. But what ended up happening is given that traffic was pretty spotty um, for the longer tail of chains, um, a lot of chains that were doing little traffic or basically being held up majority by quality of service requests just disappeared. So we had to deal with, um, I think, stability issues with Evmos. We've had to deal with issues with Fraxtal, uh, Radix, and a few others. And Grove, like we have contracts with some of those foundations and teams, so we are paying for those nodes to stay. But the, not, we don't have that for every one of those um, every one of those long tail of chains. So uh, having every single node go down to eight made teams choose which chains to unstake is what we've gathered from the conversations that we've had. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of it. So we've been, <laughs> Fred and I, mostly Fred has been scrambling in the background to make sure we can get support back for all the chains that we did lose support for. I'll also and, uh, I think this will be... Do you, do you think uh, this will continue as, we, as Gandalf continues down to one, or is this kind of a one and done uh, loss? Fred, do you want to go first? You yeah, I, I was going to say, I mean, at each, at each bottleneck, I think that we're going to see this kind of shuffle. Um, I think I, we've been working really diligently with our, our close partners to make sure that we don't lose support for the chains that are required to have that support. But I still think you are going to see the supply shuffle. Um, I, I want to back up and also mention kind of what I think is one of the demand X factors, which I have covered on a previous call. Um, at the beginning of the month, around uh, July 3rd or, or, or August 3rd, excuse me, off by a month, um, we did execute our Gigastakes keys migration, which were very much... Um, we'll say insecure at the time, and now they are secured. Um, and that did correlate with a drop in relays. So I, I'll just put that out there. It is an observation. I can't prove or disprove anything, but that's, uh, that is an observation. Interesting. I will also, I will add that I have been talking to Steve and Mike in the background about the issue that I've been bringing up every for the last few weeks, that it is going to be very hard for ourselves. Like we know it's hard, but it's going to be hard for ourselves and porters and nodies and all these other gateways to continue driving demand into the network while the supply side is unstable. Um, and that is not a knock on node runners. It's just a knock on the fact that we don't always have enough. Uh, in the incentives aren't aligned properly to have all of these to have enough redundancy for chains in place for a certain amount of chains. Um, and because of that, some customers get upset and they will pull traffic from all of their chains if they're seeing issues with the chain, the smaller chains, because it's a perception that if chain X that isn't popular is unstable, then chain Y, which is very popular, is unstable, so we will not be sending traffic to on chain Y, is what we've seen. Um, so there is a stability issue. So like I, I spent two hours talking to Steve about it yesterday. Uh, and we were coming to some conclusions on what that's going to look like, but I'm not going to preempt any decisions here on what, what they think they're going to do, but they understand, um, right? This foundation understands what the problems are. And do you think there's a general solution that can be, can be found? Uh, maybe a time frame for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, sometime this year. Definitely sometime before the end of the year. It's more of, there's, there's going to be ramifications to any decisions that are made, right? And I, like I said, I don't want to go into the details because everything is kind of just hearsay right now. I would also just say, like, when the shuffle happened, there were a lot of really obvious misses, which I, again, I'm not attacking node runners, but 
like there were several chains that had a very good and healthy amount of relays that got just completely abandoned and i think that it just shows kind of like not a lack of but maybe just not adequate amount of research into what chains like post gandalf are going to you know overperform because almost immediately when we called some of them out people were like oh i should be staking for that and then magically the supply returned so like just because a chain doesn't do a ton of relays in the current tokenomics environment if you are the only staker on it you will win outsized rewards and like that should be part of the hunt for node runners in my opinion interesting uh so what do you think the lessons we can learn from this, from, from Gandalf are, so we, when we have the next uh, cut, the way we have sort of minimization of, of issues? Fred, Personally, uh, I would actually else? revert, I would revert Gandalf back to 15 and put, bring back that stability. Like, and what's going on is we have a massive oversupply of the network on certain chains and undersupply elsewhere, and the tokenomics aren't in place to incentivize the proper distribution of supply and what ends up happening is when you constrain the amount of nodes available without changing other parameters you're basically going to constrain node runners to run only the best possible chains which is going to get rid of these smaller chains long term so the only way to really make this work is to have all of the gateways who are bringing in the traffic and signing these deals with the new chains like porters it is as they mentioned to actually just pay off to pay for those nodes to run uh, for those nodes to continue to exist and that is a really weird way to operate there's always been a weird way to operate like if we were if we were to honestly look at the network the amount of traffic we get like we only i think we calculated with a couple of different providers it's like about 20 grand i think per month on the top end to run the amount of nodes that we need like the amount of full nodes archival nodes that we need to operate the whole network so there is a world, let's say, down the line, where uh, PNF could put a quarter of a million dollars into the network and pay node runners or some node runners to provide all the full nodes um, on the back end and make sure that, that when that payment happens, that the guarantee there is that these are well-maintained nodes, a couple nodes for each different node runner, four, five, six, ten node, 10 node runners at most, I'm not sure. And provide a stable supply side. What that does is it enables confidence in myself and in, and in Sasquatch and the rest of the teams to actually go out and sell because we're not going to deal with testing periods where people are like, oh, you know, you have a 10% error rate or you have a 14% error rate, et cetera, et cetera. Fred just published all our numbers the other day uh, in the quality of service blog post. And you can see that we have, you know, tend to have over 90, 95, 98% for many chains, but it goes down as you get to chains that are less popular or much heavier to run. So there needs to be a movement of incentives from gateways trying to get the demand here to actual sustainable supply side being made available at 24 7, 365. In my mind, that's my opinion based on what I've learned here over the last three years. Okay. And Ramiro is saying use the tool we created and be happy. Uh, Ramir, could you maybe come on and give a, give a quick plug to your tool and uh, expand on that for us? Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Okay. Uh, now, to every, every now run out there that has a uh, certain amount of nodes, or even one, you can use it, but I think it's more important for bigger node runners. You can just use the tool that we created, and it will give you uh, the best configuration for your nodes that you may have. So we have not been observing if there were no runners using it, but it's up and free for everyone since Friday. So. It should uh, help us uh, make the following transition in Gandalf without all this problem, because it also supports minimum amount of nodes for a given time, like we are doing right now, that we are staking at least 24 
nodes in all of the chains that we support as PocketScan. So the rest of my runners, if they enter in any kind of agreement saying that they will provide a given number of nodes for a given chain, they can also put that into the tool and it will optimize all of their deployments for keeping this minimum and optimizing their gains. And this should leave us uh, or bring the network to a balance in time. We don't know if it will converge, but it's very, very, very probable that it will converge if everyone uses this tool and starts taking wisely. Okay. Um, uh, Miss Kitty says, is asking uh, Sasquatch, uh, does your post Gandalf experience match that of Grove? Uh, Sasquatch, you, re uh, you, reply, you replied in the chat, but if you want to reply uh, in the talk as well, that'd be great. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I think I think uh, what I was trying to make a point of is that our experience is quite a bit different just because we're so new and we really only have uh, one main line of traffic coming through the through our gateway, which is Tyco, and that's well supported by Q Spider. Um, and then as <laughs> as Fred just helped me understand, uh, my one complaint was totally misplaced, and I think we have a path forward. So. Thanks for this platform. <laughs> Get easy questions to stupid questions, or easy answers to stupid questions. There we go. Uh, here to help, clearly. Um, all right, so moving on. Uh, Breezy says, uh, we have to keep in mind the total of state nodes have also been decreasing at an alarming rate. Um, Breezy, do you want to uh, expand on that, or does someone want to reply to that? Okay, I guess that comment's going to be left there. Oh. And Reza goes on, I'm just curious what do we do, uh, plan on doing about incentivizing around it. Um, so it looks like the next thing we have to think about is how we're going to make change incentives and tokenomics, our always favorite subject, um, to incentivize people to run these, these less used chains. And Breezy goes on, I mean, for Gandalf to make sense, we need pocket nodes. So it looks like there may be a sort of incentivization and in, in tokenomics issue here, um, which I believe is, is being looked at uh, sort of holistically uh, by, by a team who's going to have a look at tokenomics once again and see how we can maybe address these issues of getting, getting better QoS. Okay, we've got Q Spider typing. Nice. While he's typing, do we have any other any other thoughts or uh, questions people want to ask? Uh, zoos come on showing uh, staked pocket is continuously decreased over time. Uh, do we have some answers to that? I assume the answer to that is around uh, multi-chain pocket and people wanting to stop staking their pocket and move over to Solana and Base and other ways of, of making yield. Uh, but anyone who's more informed about that than me, uh, please come on and, and, and tell us about that. So yeah, so I think Miss Kitty is agreeing with, with that statement. So it might be interesting to see then what yield is best, if it's better to stake your pocket uh, on the nodes or if it's better to LP in, in the pools. Uh, hopefully we'll have more pocket locked up uh, in total. But it might be interesting to see if we're going to have to change RTTM or change rewards again. 
to have just the right amount of state pocket, um, or at least uh, move that pocket around a bit. Okay, you've got a few people typing. This is good. After, as always in the subtlety, uh, don't most people get screwed by impermanent loss as LPs? That's a good point. I mean, I, I've looked into I, when Rap Pocket came out, like, there was like very, you know, there was, there's impermanent loss calculators, and there's very few combinations of numbers go up or down where you don't lose money as an LP. So I'd love, I, I'd love to know more. This is me, I'm more asking to find out where I'm wrong and why I'm wrong. Because obviously, clearly, many, many people LP all the time. That's a very good point. I think I'm certainly down on my on my rap pocket LP. Um, is there, if anyone's up on their rap pocket LP, please uh, jump off jump off mute and tell us. Okay, well, a few people are still typing, I assume, about this LP debate. Let's see what people think. Okay, let's read these spider's thoughts here. So Gandalf does make it easier for newcomers to stake. So by the time Shannon is released, more node runners should find it attractive. My concern is having only one chain stake whenever that time comes. It could make for zero earning days, and then the node runner wants to chain stake, which will then take another day or two to get average. I'm thinking max chain should be two or three to resolve that issue. What do people think of that? Should we have a max chain to two or three as opposed to one? Well, while we think about that, Breezy's come in with, there has to be an equilibrium with LPs and node staking. Otherwise, why would anyone bother stake their nodes when they can earn higher yield with LPs? With Gandalf reducing the chain uh, per node staked, why would anyone use those eight slots for a low-performing chain? Do we have anyone uh, pro-Gandalf here? Uh, would like to take it on. I appreciate that's probably Shane's position, although he's not going to be with us today or maybe going forward. But... Um, Anyone wants to come in with some some defence, that'd be good. And I think Ramirez come back with any number other than one or infinite chains per node makes no sense. And Arthur's boundary conditions for the win. And Ramirez's response is, it's all arbitrary, and I think we should optimize for independent node runners with zero overhead for providing the service to Pocket. So one chain. Another bit of discussion between one, one chain or two or three.
It seems most of the conversation here is continuing in the chat as opposed to people talking uh, with a voice note from Miss Kitty. Huge slide of things that from an investor side who do see zero earning days if someone were to stake with only one chain, depending on the chain, of course. Having another node could allow them to continue earning on those days. Yeah, I think I'll read a few more of these uh, chats and then maybe we can take the chat to, to the Discord. Um, and if no one else wants to, to talk, you may wrap this one up uh, early. And QSpider continues also if they were to switch chain, if they were to switch chains, then they could still be earning. Um, Freezy comes in with I am pro Gandalf, but numbers simply don't lie. So I agree with Mariro. We have two initiatives going at the same time that are in conflict with one another. The real issue is timing, or the gateway needs to handle the discrepancy. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I think that the issue here is that we should not uh, conflate uh, node runners with people that want to stake the coin to receive more coin. If you are on this second group that only wants to stake uh, because you own the coin and want to wants to have some profit out of it, you should go to a big node runner that will have lots of chains, not so, lots of nodes, and will be able to optimize the returns for every single one of their nodes or go to a pool and you will get a stable return on your coins. And you can do that with one chain per node. It's only a matter of how many nodes you have in the end and how you distributed them, how, how wisely you do that. You can do that with pools. Uh, so, and then there is the, another problem that is people that want to stake a node because they own a node and want to earn because they already have a Solang node or an Ethereum node or whatever. And these people don't want to have 50 other chains to be able to get the average. And this is what chain says all the time. And what we found out also earlier when we did the same study. So if you're an investor, you should not care about the maximum number of chains because you will go to a service provider, to a node runner that will get those tokens for you and will do whatever this no runner thinks is best to give you the best return and keep you in his in, as a client, keep you as a client. And another thing is to be a no runner that has the hardware and only wants to profit on the hardware. So I think that's the difference here. And that's why we need to have only one chain per node. Okay, so it sounds like the best strategy is either be super focused with one chain per node or be a very large load runner uh, running everything and sort of um, smoothing out rewards over time. And that's why we're having kind of a barbell strategy here of pushing out the people in the middle to either go very big and pull together or go very focused and small. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's the way. Like, if you're small, it's because you have really, really, really low overhead costs for shining, shining pocket, maybe because you already had the node. And if you are an old runner, like the big ones that we have today, and by big I mean hundreds of nodes, no, not thousands, then you will need to optimize for the game of what is left for you to make business. Because every single node runner that comes after we enter into one chain, one node, is, will probably have lower costs than you. So big node runners will end up being the ones providing those the, those long tail of chains that have little no runners or maybe they are under probation, uh, so they see that they can earn something there. The, the only thing that changes in my mind is the optimization optimization function. With fifty chains, it's like very easy because you all stake everything mostly, everything that you can afford to have a node. But with one chain, it's it, it's a little bit difficult 
for the node runners, for the big node runners. That's that's a different. That's not an impossible problem. I mean, it's a linear solver, and we have given you the tool, so you don't have to think about it. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like it's tying in with what Art was saying earlier, that we kind of have it as pocket as a whole, we have an incentivization problem of incentivizing people to run smaller chains or one node uh, when they could be, when as, as Jeff is saying, you may not even get any rewards for a day or two on, on these smaller chains. And it sounds like with our current economics being um, uh, so flat, that we need to maybe think about how we're going to get people incentivize them to, to stake some of these smaller chains. But you would not care about that if these smaller chains are either free to you because you have them for other things, or you are a big node runner that helps other chains that will, in the meantime, that those chains are not producing, you have other nodes producing. So you are there just fishing for the bursts of activity that these little chains may have. It, what, what changes here is the variance of your income, but not the mean of your income. And I have this, I think we discussed this a, a while ago. So a big no runner can play the long game and forget about the variance. Smaller ones, maybe not. So they should go to bigger chains, or maybe they don't have any costs associated to it. So they don't care about variance because if they don't, do not earn every day the same amount, they don't care because it's free to share in pocket. And, and I think that's what we need to look for. Need to do. OK. Let me uh, read some of the comments in the comment section and bring us update. So Miss Kitty says, so are we at a chicken and egg problem now? With one stake chain, new users will go for whatever gives the highest earnings but new chains would like to see a nominal supply of nodes before sending traffic. How do you keep a supply of nodes to attract new business if those nodes aren't earning? Subsidies, I suppose. Back to the idea of subsidies. And QSpider says, if you're staked to one chain that has zero relays, I've had some chains make zero relays. I'm staked to multiple chains, so my node continues to earn pocket, though they are through the other chains. However, if it's only one chain, then I'm stuck until I switch chains. The, uh, the one I have to wait for new chains to get average, so you can see how it could take time. That's all. Uh, just concern for newcomers. And Ben Van replies to that. If you're putting zero on a single chain, then either there is no traffic on that chain, or there are way too many nodes on that chain. Either way, you should drop it. I think there's two things here. One, I would love to see a... Uh, reduction in the minimum number of nodes necessary to make a session to one node and i would also like to see a vast increase in the number of nodes available in a session um like pick a hundred a thousand how about all of them um those are things that make the gateways life easier and I would also challenge the assumption that zero earning days on a single cha chain are bad. If you are preemptively staked on a chain that receives intermittent traffic and you're the only person there to receive it, even if you get four zero days in a row, but the fifth day you make 10x, then your net revenue is still considerably higher than had you not been staked for that chain. Can we do that on Morse or? Okay. No, I just want to say I agree with what Fred says that we need to put the minimum in one. That can be done in Morse. We need to increase the total number of nodes per session. I also agree with that. I don't think, I don't know if we can do that on Morse because that might be a problem with the block size. And I will add up to what he said, that we need to lower the, the amount needed to stake a node to, to make it cheaper to stake for a given chain. Uh, it, it's not a problem to have a lot of nodes if the, if the total stake pop stays the same. And it's, it's the same. It's only more fragmented. That's all. 
Okay, it sounds like we've got some agreement from Ramiro, and uh, Ben Van comes in with agree with Fred. Uh, Fred's points. So it looks like we've got a got a path forward or something to do. Uh, that might be a new a new pet for uh, pet to, to to write up. Um, Miss Kitty says, "Damn, even my shitty takes sound better when read aloud with Cryptocorn's accent." So thank you for that. My uh, mellifluous accent is is always available. Um, Jeff uh, comes back to Ben with. In which case, the node runner has to sync a new chain, so they have to wait. I just thought it would be good to have the option making it more attractive for situations like this. But one chain is fine with me personally. Good there. And Oshchansky is coming with uh, reducing num sessions to one. Possible on Morse, but we don't want to manage another consensus breaking change. Increasing num nodes per session to infinity. We'll work towards this in Shannon. Plus one to what Fred said. No, so I think there's, a, there's broad agreement, it sounds like. With, with Fred's points of, of how to solve that issue. Uh, the question is, do we want to do it on Morse? And probably not, as this will be consensus breaking. Uh, Breezy says, Fred, we may end up with a claim proof issue, but do I agree we should increase the no per session back to perhaps four or five like we originally started with? I think he does agree with that. So this, this seems like we've come with something useful, uh, a solution today. All right. Any other thoughts people have or uh, questions they want to raise? Going once. And then Breezy asks, how long do we want to wait before continuing with Gandalf? And my understanding is, and please someone jump in here, is that I think the dates are set, are they not? Unfortunately, we don't have anyone from PNF here today to uh, answer some of these questions. That's a bit of a weird one. So yeah, this effort was uh, championed by Shane, who, as you guys know, resigned from PNF, and kind of, we'll see uh, how he can still be the community moving forward. Uh, I think for now it's on pause. You know, the network is still recalibrating with the new parameters. Uh, let's just see it through. We're already being asked questions about really going up, going down. So let's keep things as is for now, and then reevaluate kind of every week that things change, whether we need to do it uh, now or later. So as a whole, kind of on, I will I would say again, it's on pause for now, but we are evaluating uh, every single day. And when you said later, do you mean post Shannon or sort of the next uh, coming? Yeah, it doesn't have to be uh, in Shannon. It can, it can be as early as next week or next month, just a function of seeing how the network keeps recalibrating and uh, the need for it uh, based on how many nodes we have or don't have per per, per, per. Yeah, Cutting up a little bit there. Um, no, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be in Shannon. Uh, this can be as early as next week. We just need to keep track of how many nodes per chain there are and kind of how that's impacting the overall performance of the network. OK, great. We have another question coming in from Breezy. Okay, let's give Breezy another minute to add out his thought. There we go. So Breezy does say, I guess we may end up with a timing issue. We certainly don't want this going into the holiday season, but we wanted to, to fully deployed pre-Shannon deployment, which I believe is scheduled for Q1 of 2025. 
Does that timing line up? Um, uh, anyone working on protocol? Yeah, uh, that time lines up, and um, I hear you, Brinzi. Let's just, we won't move this into the holiday season, uh, but let's just keep an eye out on how, on how the network is impacted. Because like we said, like some readers are still going down. Uh, you have no idea how many support requests uh, Fred and Art are handling every single day as a result of the last changes. Um, so let's, as soon as we see those, uh, slowing down, we'll know that's the right time. Um, and I think, you know, we have these calls every week, so let's kind of just revisit the, revisit the question next week and see where things are then. Okay, it sounds like we've got a immediate next steps for what to do is to wait until we uh, have some more info and uh, know what's going on before we move on with Gandalf. But uh, there's at least a time frame involved there. Good stuff. Um, any other questions you want to bring up? Um, we've got another 15 minutes. Uh, if we want to take all 15 minutes, uh, the floor is, as always, open. Oh, I think it's worth bringing this up. It's a small item, a line, line, eh, line item. Um, given the when Pip Thirty Eight passed, Mike needed uh, to resign as CEO of Grove within thirty days. Um, so we had a board resolution go through uh, on our end. Since we do have a board uh, made up of our investors and myself and Mike, uh, so Mike has officially resigned um, as of September first, and I have been officially. Uh, given the ability to take over a CEO uh, on September 1st as well. So that that promise is being kept. Just wanted to give you all a heads up. Um, yeah. I should probably add that Fred well, is becoming our chief information officer. Thank you. I, I should add that Fred should be, is becoming our chief information officer given everything that he's doing here and kind of our play here for enterprise deals. We have a bunch that are in flight right now. And old chance he's become officially the CTO of growth as well. Um, given everything that he's been doing here. So, uh, yeah, the, the team that we have now is the team moving forward, obviously. Um, we have basically gotten to the point where everyone here is a masochist and really loves this project and really wants to spend all their time working on it. So, uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the team moving forward. So, thank you all. Well, congratulations, Art, Fred, and Olshansky for your all your moves up. Um, it, it may come back to bite you, but uh, seems like you guys are definitely the the, the core team. Uh, Going to build this forward and have a lot of love and the dedication to this. So, you know, as always, we look forward to what you guys are going to do and we'll support you how we can. All right, is that going to be our last end of the day, or anyone else have anything else to say uh, in the last few minutes? You know, 30 seconds or so. And lots of congratulations in the chat. We have King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. That may or may not become a meme coming forward. Some, some good jokes going on in chat. Um, and moving on quickly, uh, Ben says that community chains may be a good option to help with underutilized backend servers. Uh, so let let Qspy know. All right, well, we've managed not to burn the house down, which I'm going to take as a rather large success. Um, we have some good chats and some, some ideas going forward, uh, which has been pretty successful. So uh, I think I'm going to round this call up and say thank you to everyone for, for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. 
And I guess we will probably see you all in this time uh, next week. So one or two people to make the last chats. Oh, thank you. Up. Thank you, Breezy. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so I think it will be good. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Cheers and goodbye. Thanks, CryptoCoin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.